What a day. You gotta love these bluebird skies. It's not too hot. Birds singing. Thankful for days like this. We've had a lot of heat and humidity lately. It's been pretty miserable. And uh, days like this are nice. It's a kind of a lazy day too. I'm just going through hives. I've got some extracted supers I need to get out and they're probably not gonna fill it up with anything, but um, I need to get them clean and protected on some big hives. Although this hive, I put this super on about a week ago and they're putting some sumac in there. And uh, I've not seen shining sumac in bloom anywhere yet so i don't know where they're finding that it's close uh, there's got to be some that's a little earlier and that's what they're putting in there uh, it's a it's a distinctive flavor it's um got this tanginess to it it's kind of a medium to light amber got a tangy note through it and then at the very end it's got this distinctive aftertaste i don't love the little aftertaste but the rest of it is incredible it's really good I'd say it's a it's a high quality honey. Probably not the highest quality, but it's high quality. It's a pretty day today. I'm going through feeding nukes, um, giving boxes to anybody that needs it. Some of my last round of nukes are getting big enough they're hitting critical mass where they're taking a gallon a week. Some of them will take more than a gallon a week and they're drawing foundations out uh, on that feed, so that's good. Some of them I really need to start giving more than a gallon a week, which means I need bucket feeders on top. I'm not set up to do that on everybody. I do some thinking about that. In beekeeping, you gotta make hay while the sun shines. You got bees drawing foundation, you got bees making queens. You better get all that you need done right then because the time is coming when they won't do all those things. They, they just quit on you. So my poor horizontal hive got slimed. So I took all of the frames, shook them out, ended up burning a bunch of them. They were old. Compressed it down to what I thought the bees could cover really well. They've cleaned the mess out. And the queen that I introduced is in here. I'm, I'm happy, that was a traumatic experience for them, but they, uh, they kept her. I didn't see her in here when I was doing all that. She was, there were bees all over the wall, just bees going crazy everywhere. So I gave them a little bit of feed, just enough that they can handle. We'll see if we can get them restarted. It's getting a little late in the year, but with proper feeding, I think they've got time. I can't emphasize enough how much I hate these feeders. These feeders are so much better. So much better. This is fresh nectar getting brought in. See the color is kind of a medium to dark amber. Flavor is eh, not that great. I'm guessing that's mimosa. I'm not. A, I'm not 100, but I think that's probably what it is. It's Thursday, July 13th. My daughter, four-year-old little girl, got strep, and she gave it to me. So yesterday, I had a. 101 degree fever uh, we both got antibiotics so that's good i guess i'm just amazed at how a four-year-old can go from perfectly fine one day to just pitifully sick and and then today she is she's fine <laughs> you wouldn't know anything was wrong with her she's been Playing kitchen and feeding me, you know, meals that she prepares and playing trains and fighting with her brother, running around, playing with the dogs. Meanwhile, I feel like I've been run over and drugged by a semi. Don't feel like doing anything except laying around. 
So I really don't feel like doing anything today, but I have to. I should have put uh, queen cells in my incubator yesterday, but I just didn't have it in me. I decided that discretion was the better part of valor there. Just wait till the day the medicine and sleep take its effect. So I've got to get those out and I've got equipment I've got to get put together so that uh, I can make nukes tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to all this. I, I was looking forward to it uh, when I felt right, but I don't, I'm not looking forward to it right now. I've got a massive amount of work coming up. I've got to um, get all of my supers pulled off and we are going to the beach with my wife's parents next week. They have um, have a beach house they get every year and we're tagging along with them. So I'll be in South Carolina for a week. Sort of looking forward to that. Kids are really looking forward to that. But as soon as I get back, I've got a massive workload. I'll have to cycle through my yards. I've only got like 20 B escapes, which is not enough. So I'll have to cycle through yards. It'll take me two or three days. Um, well, it'll take three days on 20 colonies. So I could pull 60 supers in on those 20 and then three more days on 20 more colonies, 60 more supers. I don't know how many supers I've got out. I've got all of them out. I don't know how many of them will be full. And then as soon as I get my supers pulled in, I've got to jump on uh, getting bottom boards on everybody because I've still got double screens on a lot of these nukes and I need, um, I need screen bottom boards with the coroplast uh, blocker on the bottom so that when I do a round of OAV, the first round, I'm going to grade them on mite population and see where my low mite population hives are and um, make sure that those colonies are in my drone flooding yards and that I'm breeding from those colonies. And also that my high mite colonies are not in my drone flooding yard. So over the winter, I'll move those out and uh, weed them out of my operation just through genetics. It's sort of what Randy Oliver's doing, except he's doing mite washes. So I think I'm getting dirtier data, but it's a lot easier to get. And then some colonies that I really like, I'll probably go through and do Harbo assays on them. And that'll give me a, you know, some information at least going into next spring who I want to choose for breeders. If they don't supersede, if they don't die over winter. A lot to think about, but the season is coming to a close quickly. A lot to think about for next year. Well, I gotta say, I'm, I'm sort of relieved I think I've had a virgin or something get in here and tear these cells down, sting them. Um, I don't have any queens to make nukes with. So that's some workload, workload done. I don't have to worry about it. It's a disappointment, but maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Oh, I really feel like garbage. <laughs> I'm gonna close them up and see if these little nukes need any feed because uh, we will be leaving for a week. I'm gonna try to get everybody topped off tomorrow. I think that'll work well. I think that'll work out good. I'd say the shining sumac flow has begun. <laughs> this whole bush is buzzing. A lot of those are my bees, but it's also a lot of solitary bees. I don't know if those are bumbles. I guess they're bumblebees. I'm not as knowledgeable on the native pollinators as I should be. A lot of different ones. Mm -hmm. 
This is an extracted comb. You can see they took the residual honey and recapped it. That's why it looks like that. And there's a tiny amount of nectar in there. Not much at all. So either this uh, Shining Sumac Flow has not gotten started good yet, or it's not gonna happen. I saw honeybees with um, pollen baskets on it, so they'll at least bring in some fresh pollen, which is good. But I could use them to make some honey off this, and I don't know if they will. Thursday evening, been babysitting all day. Resting, trying to get the film better. Now that the wife is home to watch the kids, I'm extracting some honey. This is not my honey. Uh, this is, uh, I guess you'd call it contract honey. And a local beekeeper from the other side of the county has got 10 hives or something and had some supers and just froze them and waited for a convenient time for me to extract them for him since I've got the honey house here. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I probably wouldn't be doing that tonight, but I've got to get all this stuff back to him tomorrow because we're leaving for the beach on Saturday morning. So I, I have to get done with all this. Have to. Don't want to, but have to. I've got to say that um, I was a little down on my Simple Harmony Farms Uncapper earlier in the year because I was having some tear out problems. I uh, get a lot of comb broken, blowouts and stuff like that. And just wasn't real happy about that. And uh, since then, I've controlled the temperature better and I think it's gonna work just fine. Uh, when I look at where to put limited funds to expand into, an uncapping unit is going to save me time, labor. Uh, it's also going to give me a, a capturable product in spinning honey out of my wax, but also give me clean wax. But it's going to cause some downstream problems too. You know, the one I'm looking at is a chain uncapper, and that's going to put a lot of fine wax into my honey. So I'm thinking that 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 area might be far enough away from income generation that I would prioritize something else like another bottling tank so I can bottle two varietals at one time um, maybe I could do a creamed honey and liquid honey at the same time you know maybe a bottling machine so I can be a lot more efficient in bottling and get stuff out faster if I try to get into grocery stores and things like that you know at this point my income really isn't bees or queens or honey it is bottled labeled honey this is what makes money so something that helps me do this right here a lot quicker and faster i think is um, is smart because once i get all my permitting and stuff i can start packing honey i can buy bulk honeys and pack it if i've got the machinery and equipment to do it a lot of food for thought. Who is ready for the beach? Me! Who's ready to get out of the car with the kids? Mommy! Mommy! Sunday, July 22nd, we got back from the beach last night. Uh, wanted to stay as long as we could, so we gave the kids one last half day at the beach yesterday and then drove in after that, which uh, means that we got back at like 12.30 last night. It was, 
it's hard for me to stay up that late these days. <laughs> it's really difficult. And then I, I had to have coffee at like 10 o'clock so I could finish the drive out. And then I got home and I couldn't sleep. So it was, it was a late night. So I'm out of sorts today. I've got a lot of chores around the house to get caught up on. But I'm gonna go look at a bee yard first. I want to see if we made anything off Shining Sumac, if that is still going or not, um, and get a plan together for the next two or three days to start getting escapes put in. You know, if I'm ready for that or if the flow, if there is a flow, if it's still going a little bit or, or what. So basically just gonna to go do some reconnaissance right now. So there's definitely some life left in this bloom. Funny bees are working it. Seen pollen baskets. Don't know if there's a nectar flow attached to it or not, but we're about to find out. I've already been through these. I'm still gonna crack into those, but what I'm seeing so far is not encouraging. This is a drawn super. They've cleaned it up. They might have a little bit in there, but they're not building it out at all. So if there is any nectar trickling in, it's very, very minimal. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna get anything from Shining Sumac. Um, I've got some other yards to get through that have got a chance of making something, but that yard is near a clear cut that's full of it. If they're not making anything off of it, then I don't expect to. Uh, Honey Plants in North America is a book that every beekeeper should have. It's written by John Lovell in 1926. And he says that um, Shining Sumac, Dwarf Sumac, Wing Sumac, those are all common names for Rus Capilina. It can do well and can be a good nectar producer. In some years, it does better when it's hot and dry. I think that's a common trait for sumac. And we've actually had rain lately. Um, Earlier in the season during the smooth sumac flow, which was good, we were in a drought and smooth sumac and clover were both pretty good this year. And um, now we are actually getting some rain and shining sumac doesn't seem to be producing anything. I've had a lot of time to think about my operation while I was on vacation. A lot of drive time, which is when I do my deep thinking and you know, sitting on the beach and watching the waves and stuff. And I gotta say, I think I've done reasonably well, uh, like as about as well as I could expect this year. Came into the season with 40 colonies. I sacrificed about 10 of those to split down and you know, went into the honey flow with about 30 production colonies. I've grown my numbers to 125. That's including, you know, production colonies, nukes that have grown into production colonies, nukes that are still small, um, all sorts of stuff. I've got little ones, I've got big ones, and everything in between. And and I'm going to make a honey crop, so I'm expecting three thousand pounds of honey, something like that. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I'll I'll know after I get it all pulled off. And, uh, you know, Bob Benny says that you can triple your outfit every year. And I've pretty much done that. I've got some honey for cash flow. And, you know, I, I think that's pretty well done. But it's still not enough. Uh, reading ROB Manly, talking with Bob, uh, they both recommend that you don't try to go full time in the bees until you've got 200 colonies. And I really think, you know, that that makes sense to me. You really need to be in the 200, 250 range to be pretty viable. Um, I think if I could get there selling Queens nukes and honey and also buying honey, packing honey, I'd have a viable business at that point. And I'm just thinking, you know, I knew coming into this season it was gonna be a building year. Uh, lost my 
you know, got laid off from my job in January, decided to go full-time in the bees and build it up to where I could go full-time, I knew it was going to be a building year. I don't want next year to also be a building year. So I'm thinking, how do I get from the, you know, 125 up to closer to 200, where I can maybe go into the nectar flow next year at 200 colonies? And, um... Uh, we're, we're headed to dearth right now. I, I think it's just a lost battle, lost cause trying to, um, trying to rear queens and make nukes in Tennessee at this time of year. It's, it's done, it's over with. We've got hive beetle pressure. Um, drones are gonna start getting kicked out of hives and bees just don't wanna, uh, they don't wanna cooperate. They don't wanna make queens right now. So, I'm thinking two ways. Two ways I think I could make progress. Uh, I can run down to northeast Georgia in fall and buy a bunch of singles, single deep colonies. And I've done the math on that. Um, and there's a potential to 3x my money on them next year. Um, you know, it could be a lot less. Like if you have a good year, it could be good. As long as they don't die, I don't see how I can lose money on them. Of course, you, it's livestock. You can always lose money on them. They can die. But I think that's probably the smartest place I've got to put money right now is into, into more bees. The other way I can see to increase my numbers before the flow next year, before the main flow, is to find a good source for early queens in Florida mated mated queens and then in like late march early april next year i can make big splits and um, introduce a mated queen and then feed those hives get them fed up to the point that uh, they can make honey in the main flow which would be may that gets a little tricky because you don't want to pull your hives down too much or you know your crop could diminish overall but um, that's something i think i could i could do but buying hives as fall is less risky i think i think it's less risky <sighs> so i got a lot of thinking to do i don't have enough money to buy myself into 200 colonies. I mean, I, I, I can't do that. I just can't do it. So I gotta figure out what I can do and find a balance. I'm, I'm agonizing over capital allocation right now. Um, I've got a lot of assets that I need to buy and I can't afford them all. So where can you put money? What's the smartest way to invest the money that you do have? And I've actually made a, a list and I write the asset name, the cost, and then cash flow generated next year. Uh, and that could either be a direct cost savings or it could be cash flow generation. So you take a, a beehive that costs $250 in September, October. Um, if I can make a hundred pounds of honey on it next year, you know, if my retail sales hold through and I can scale at the prices I'm getting now, I can make a lot of money on those, uh, on each unit, especially if I pull a nuke out of them and sell a $200 nuke and then make a honey crop with them. You know, I can, I can pencil that out. That cicada was right under there, right where I put my hand. Oh. <laughs> hey, buddy. He's just emerged. I just got done working this yard, fed nukes. I lifted honey up over escapes. Got a couple supers there that have got brood in them still. This hive is queenless. Found that when I took their supers off. And I don't know what these bees here are doing. 
I don't know if they're coming out of this coinless hive and it's in absconded or if they're just confused because I took supers off some others and stacked them on top of other hives. I don't know what in the world they're doing. It looks like a swarm, but it's not. Strange. Hot today. It's the 24th, I believe, of July. I've been through five yards so far today, and I've got almost all the honey supers in all those yards lifted up over bee escapes. I think I had a couple of supers that had some brood in them, so I'd shake them down, get excluders underneath them, but um, it's been a busy day. We've got to be in a dearth right now. The bees are so ill. It's ridiculous. This last yard I went through, normally I can work that whole yard, not get stung at all. You know, maybe once if I accidentally squish a bee or something. Today, probably 10 stings in that yard. Just from cracking the lid <laughs> and moving boxes and putting escapes. I, I wasn't even getting into the brood nest and stuff. They're just ill. They don't like, they don't like July. July and August, they don't like it. Well, this has turned into a not so good day. This was a little mating nuke. I had a mated queen in here. They had too much space to protect. He got overrun by wax moth. This one here, I had two mated queens in here. They got overrun by hive beetles. That side got robbed out. And I've got this stinking, slimy mess on my tailgate here. farther you go into the season the stronger you need to make your splits and these were too weak I got it wrong on some of them got it right on a bunch but I got it wrong on some that's aggravating it's really aggravating I'm mad at myself I put these supers on in uh, optimism we'll call it optimism a just in case kind of thing for a uh, smooth, su uh, shining sumac flow. And that didn't really materialize, so I'm pretty much just gonna pull these out. If they've got any weight in them at all, I'll dry them out and extract them. If they don't have any weight, then they're gonna go into storage. It's, um, it's a turning point in the season. It feels sort of weird. feels weird you know it's like i've got a lot of work behind me feel accomplished i've done a lot of them but it's also kind of over you know it's just weird long long time until beekeeping gets good again which will be next spring so sort of a bittersweet feeling i guess is what i'm saying So pulled a few honey supers in today. Those are mostly empty. Um, seven supers, if there's 10 pounds of honey in them, I'll be surprised, but I'll probably still extract it because I'm selling honey at $9.10 a pound wholesale. 10 pounds is $91. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of time to run comb through the extractors, so. I don't know what I'm gonna end up with this year. It's not gonna be as much as I need. So um, that's not good, but it is what it is. A lot of thinking, I'm doing a lot of thinking about capital allocation. I've talked a little bit about that. I think I'm gonna do an entire video on that. And uh, that brings me to the question and answer this week. Um, Tyler Dorston sent me an email asking about like the order of expansion in honey processing equipment and and stuff like that and uh, when I got into beekeeping I did a lot of research on that because I, I like to buy once cry once and I don't want to misspend money you know I, I'm willing to pay 
good money for good stuff, but I don't want to get those decisions wrong. And I just agonize over that. So I read a ton of stuff on B-Source and everywhere I could find um, looking for, you know, what what's the best bang for the buck for a small but growing operation. And I agree with this order. Uh, first would be a motorized extractor. And on motorized extractors, a six is better than a four, a nine is better than a six, a 20 is better than a nine. The bigger, the better, um, within reason. And uh, you know, you can get a, like a nine frame for six or $900 or something like that. And a 20 may cost twice that, um, but it's worth it, it is. If you're going to have 10, 20, 30 hives, I'd, I'd get a 20 frame extractor. It'll pay for itself over time. The next thing that you wanna get is an uncapping tank. And I think that the Simple Harmony Farms uncapper that I've got is probably the best bang for the buck. If you wanna use a hand plane or a hot knife or a cold knife, that's fine. But that Simple Harmony Farms uncapper with a pin roller as a backup, they work really well together and you can move through a lot of stuff pretty quickly uh, the third thing that I bought actually it was the second thing but I picked them up on the same day used I got the extractor and a bottling tank same day I got a 42 gallon Maxant bottling tank a heated bottling tank with a no drip valve and I think that's the order I would start out in I would go motorized extractor uncapping tank heated bottling tank bottling out of a five gallon bucket with a gate is just a no-go uh, it's just a no-go if you're going to move any volume at all you've got to have a heated bottling tank with a no drip valve and then past that the next thing i got was a second extractor and uh, so i've got a 20 and a 24 frame and what that second extractor allows me to do is put boxes, entire boxes on my uncapping tank, take frames out of the boxes, uncap and go into extractor number one. And then when that one is full and spinning, I uncap and go into extractor number two. So I've always got frames spinning and that's the name of the game. I'm only touching those frames one time as they come out of the box to get uncapped and go into the extractor. Uh, when you've got one extractor, you uncap and go into the uncapping tank and let them drip while you wait on the extractor to finish. And then you have to rehandle those frames to put them into the extractor. So you're, you're double handling everything. And uh, the two extract, my setup right now, works pretty darn well um, so that's the order I would use up to the size I'm at now what I'm going to do past here I need more storage I need honey storage uh, I'd like to have a separate hot room that I can temperature control store honey in there warm honey in there use it as a drying room uh, I need bottle storage I need I need all this stuff uh, I would love to have a second bottling tank but next year um, this year I started with like 40 colonies went into the flow with maybe 30 production colonies because I split down so much next year I could be going into the flow with 100 150 production colonies depending on how things shake out and at that point I've got to be in drums you know, I, I can't handle that volume of honey in uh, in buckets. It, it's just not gonna be efficient. So to go to drums, I've got to have a clarifying tank that I can run both extractors into uh, with a uh, float switch and a pump and maybe a settling tank. I might go straight into the drums, but I may, I may add a settling tank. I'll probably try it with just the drums first. So um, that's where I'm thinking now. Also need a trailer, uh, probably a car hauler that I put some extract on. Um, 
you know, something dedicated to hauling my B equipment that um, I can't afford a flatbed truck right now. So I need something that's better than what I've got, but that I can pull with a half ton truck. So lots of thinking to do uh, for next year. Lots of budgeting. So coming up on the channel, I've had a request to finish out my my wax dip tank video, which I worked on a while back and have not finished. I've also got a long form video I'm gonna post on Corey Stevens' channel. Uh, I'm doing the edit for him. Um, probably half of the way done with that and uh, just need some time to work on it. Um, hopefully I'll get that time in the next little bit. The beekeeping season is slowing down, but I'm in the middle of honey harvest right now, so it's sort of a scramble. And then as soon as the honey's over with, I've got to jump on mite treatments, which is a scramble. So I've, it's coming to a close quick, but I've still got a bunch of work ahead of me. I'm gonna be speaking in St. Louis at uh, Hivarama on August the 12th. I think Corey Stevens is gonna be there. Uh, Randy McCaffrey, Dirt Rooster is going to be there. Some others will be there. I'll leave a link in the description and probably post a, a pin a comment where you guys can look at information of that. Uh, I talked talk to the guy who's putting that on, and um, he said that we need we need to get some promotion going. I think I don't think enough people know about it. So um, if anybody is you know in the central U.S. and not that far from St. Louis, I think that'd be a good event to go to. And it's not terribly expensive. Um, you know, I, I think it'll be a good deal. Guys, if you've got any questions, ask them in the comments below. You can also send them to info at duckriverhoney.com. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.